Well, what can we do with the ideal gas law? We can do a lot of different things. Uh, first thing we have to introduce, though, is the idea of standard conditions. As we've seen, there's a lot of variables that involve, are involved with a gas. And so we find it convenient to establish standard temperature and pressure. It's just kind of a point of reference. Just like for, for pressure, we, we kind of use one atmosphere, the atmospheric pressure at sea level, as sort of a reference point. For gases, standard temperature and pressure, often abbreviated STP, Standard pressure is one atmosphere. One atmosphere is equal to 760 torr. Standard temperature is 273 Kelvin, which is equal to zero degrees Celsius. And you might ask, well, why did they pick those, that pressure and temperature? I think they picked it because it was convenient. I mean, if you're choosing something, you might as well be convenient about it. Standard pressure is pretty easy to obtain. A lot of this work was done before the discovery of electricity. They didn't have technology and, and thermostat regulated ovens and things to maintain temperatures. So they were doing things the hard way. Pressure of one atmosphere is easy to obtain. If you use a manometer and the level inside and the level outside of the fluid in that J-tube are equal, then you know that the pressure inside is equal to the pressure outside. The pressure outside doesn't vary that much. It's usually very close to one atmosphere. Standard temperature is the freezing point of water. If you immerse your container into an ice water bath, ta-da, you have zero degrees Celsius, so convenient. STP is very useful when we make comparisons between gases. We've talked about molar mass. That's the mass of one mole of something. Molar volume is the volume of one mole of a gas at STP. So we could calculate that. So let's do it because it'll be fun. Um, so. We have the ideal gas law, and we want to calculate the volume of one mole of gas. So the volume is going to be nRT over P. N is one mole. R is 0 0.08206 liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. And the temperature is 273. And the pressure is one atmosphere. Because we're choosing those, that temperature, pressure, and um, amount of moles. So the volume of one mole of gas is 22.40238 is what my calculator is telling me. Using uh, 8206 as our constant um, with four sig figs, this would be 22.4 liters, 40 liters. That is the molar volume of a gas at STP. Usually, usually you see it just 22.4. So the molar volume of any gas is 22.4 liters per mole at STP. Remember that a mole is 6.022 times 10 to the 23rd molecules or atoms of gas. What's, what's different about gases is that which gas we're talking about doesn't matter. Could be carbon monoxide, could be um, oxygen, could be xenon, it doesn't matter. One mole of different gases is going to have the same volume. The masses will be different, but the volumes are the same. So this makes a very useful conversion factor. 
Here's an illustration. Uh, one mole of helium at STP occupies 22.4 liters. 22.4 liters is a cube about this big. So, you know, kind of a reasonable size, actually. 22.4 liters of xenon is one mole at STP. Of methane, same volume, same number of particles. The volume of the gas depends on the pressure and the temperature which we specified at STP. And aside from that, it only depends on the moles, the number of particles. doesn't depend on what the particles are. We can calculate the density of a gas. Uh, density, remember, is the ratio of the mass of something to its volume. Density of gases are generally reported in grams per liter. For liquids and solids, we use grams per milliliter or grams per cubic centimeter. Because gases are so much less dense, we use grams per liter so that the numbers are more reasonable. So how do you calculate the, the density of a gas? Well, choose one mole. So the mass of one mole of the gas is the molar mass of that substance. The volume of one mole of gas at STP is 22.4 liters. So you can find the density of a gas at STP by just taking its molar mass and dividing by 22.4. So here are two examples with helium and nitrogen at STP. The density of helium is uh, 4 grams per mole divided by 22.4 liters per mole. 0.179 grams per liter. <laughs> Density of nitrogen. The nitrogen molecules weigh more, and so the density will be greater. And this is why helium floats. A helium balloon will float because air, which contains a lot of nitrogen and other similarly dense gases, um, is more dense than the helium is. So we see that density is proportional to the molar mass of a gas. So here's our ideal gas law. PV equals nRT. And what they've done here is they've rearranged it. Um, moles divided by volume. So we took N and V and separated them, and we get P over RT on the other side. The molar density is moles per liter. The molar mass is grams per mole. And that gives us the density, which is grams per liter. So how we got here, density is grams per mole. And we need this molar mass thrown in there to convert the moles to, um, to grams. So if you like memorizing equations, you can memorize that and figure out the density of a gas at other temperatures. Personally, I don't find that um, all that useful. So I'll show you how, I'm, how I like to do it. So calculate the density of xenon gas at a pressure of 742 millimeters of mercury and a temperature of 45 degrees Celsius. So you could use that equation, or we could just think about it. Density. OK, density equals the mass over the volume. So what I need to do here is I need to find, just assign a quantity of gas, and then find its mass and its volume, and plug it into the density equation. So I find it convenient to choose one mole, because I know the mass of one mole. So I'm going to choose one mole of gas. And this is xenon. Well, the mass of one mole of xenon is 131.29 grams. So 131.29 grams is the mass. Now I need to figure out what the volume is. Well, the volume, I can't use the ideal, um, I can't use the molar volume, 22.4, because this is not at STP. 
So the volume is nRT over P. Well, it's one mole, because I picked that for being easy. There's that ideal gas constant again. Liter atmospheres per mole Kelvin. That reminds me that I need my pressure to be in atmospheres. So I better convert that. 742 millimeters of mercury, one atmosphere over 760 millimeters of mercury. 742 divided by 760. 0 0.97632 atmospheres. Nope. Six. And my temperature needs to be in kelvins. Um, we'll do that down at the bottom. Temperature is 45 degrees Celsius plus 273.15. Three eighteen point one five Kelvin. So temperature in here. I left out the five. Divided by the volume. No, divide, I'm finding the volume. Divided by the pressure. Seven. Six three two atmospheres. I look at my units and I see that they're all going to work out okay. So I get point eight zero eight two zero six times three eighteen point one five divided by point seven six three two. So the volume there is twenty six. Point seven zero six. That's got three significant figures, and that is in liters. One thirty one point two nine divided by twenty six point what did I say seven four zero six. Okay, I come up with a density of. 4.91 grams per liter per xenon. Is that reasonable? We just saw that nitrogen was one point something and helium was less than one. But xenon is a big molecule. It's heavier, so its density is going to be greater. So you can use the equation on the previous slide or you can think it out, whichever works best for you. Any questions? We can also, by measuring a gas, find out what the molar mass of an unknown gas is. And I think we're going to do this in lab one day. <coughs> if you have an unknown volatile liquid, it's easier than if it's just a gas, but it can also be done with the gas. If you take a weighed sample and heat it until it becomes a gas and measure the temperature, pressure, and volume of the gas, you can calculate the number of moles present in that sample. That's the number of moles. You weighed it so you know its mass, and you can find the molar mass that way. Sample of gas has a mass of 827 milligrams. Its volume is 0 0.270 liters at a temperature of 88 degrees Celsius and a pressure of 975 millimeters of mercury. Find its molar mass. I approach this in the same way that I did the density. I need molar mass. Well, what is molar mass? Molar mass is the mass divided by the number of moles. It's often abbreviated with a, a kind of a script capital M. So that's mass divided by moles. Well, they gave me the mass, right? 
They gave me the mass is 827 milligrams. Is that the unit I'm going to want for my molar mass? No. Well, I could write out a whole conversion for this, or I could say to myself, well, what does milli mean? Milli means 10 to the minus 3. So what I'm going to do is instead of writing milli, I'm going to write the numerical meaning of it, which is 10 to the minus 3, and then grams. That's not proper scientific notation. It's OK, because this is just in the middle of our calculation. It'll get straightened out at the end. Now we need n. Well, we're going to need Pivnert to calculate n. n is PV, no, yes, PV over RT. So we need pressure, volume, gas constant, and temperature. Well, we've got the pressure in millimeters of mercury. Um, Well, I'll do it the long way. 975 millimeters of mercury times one atmosphere over 760 millimeters of mercury. Sometimes what I'll do is, is in, I'll actually put the, I'll show you, and then I'll erase it, is I'll take the 975 over 760 atmospheres and just do the whole calculation at once that can be confusing sometimes so I won't do that 975 divided by 760 uh, we get 1.28 and I'm going to add at least two extra digits there so I don't have rounding errors there's my pressure And my volume was given in liters. That was kind, 270 liters. Then on the bottom, I've got R, 0 0.08206. Usually, you don't have to work at memorizing that one because you end up writing it so many times that you can't help but remember it. And then the temperature. Well, we can't have Celsius. 88 degrees Celsius plus 273.15, 